Hello everyone, this is Jeff from the library. Today we are going to be talking about primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Let's jump right in here. Okay, so a primary source, I think of this as a first level source. This is an article, book, film, interview, or other source written by or documenting the experience of someone who was there at the time of the event being described. So the classic way to think of this is an eyewitness. Someone who was there. Uh, a soldier in a war writing about the war, or a letter that was written home to his family during the Civil War, and we have a copy of this. It's a very, it's a direct experience, um, but it doesn't, it's not really looking to summarize the event. It's a direct experience of something that happened, or someone who published a study who conducted the research for the study themselves. That's also a primary source. We'll look at some examples here. So let's talk about this first one I just mentioned, an, an historical document from the time of the event. Let's click on this link here. Okay, so we have a bunch of, we have a collection of primary sources related to the American Revolution here. Cornwallis surrenders at Yorktown. This is a, a writing from the time. Uh, Dr. James Thatcher wrote this account and he was there seeing this thing happen at the end of what became the end of the Revolutionary War. George Washington reluctantly answers his country's call. Uh, George Washington addresses demoralized troops. Let's take a look at this here. So the primary source here, this is, this is the text of his speech to his, his troops on this day. This is a primary source. This is people wrote down what he said, or he had this written down, you know, his notes for this. And this is what he said. He's not looking to summarize the entire war here. He was in the war. He was in the moment uh, giving giving this address. So it's very real. It's very in the moment. As long as you understand what it is, you're not going to get any more real than this. But he's also, this isn't trying to summarize the entire war or anything. That's That's what this is. It's real in the moment. Let's go back to our show here. Okay. Also, so that's that's one example of a primary source. Another would be an article written by the researcher who gathered the data for the experiment. And you see this all the time with scholarly articles, peer-reviewed articles. Those are very often written by the people who gathered the data. Let's look at an example here. So that would be a primary source because it's a witness. It's a witness to the event. Okay, so we're going to look at this study here. Preliminary analysis of the effectiveness of online practical laboratory delivery using 3D models for higher, higher education courses in biological anthropology. Okay. Again, you can tell from that title, this person is not trying to summarize everything we know about biology. This is a very specific study. And we can tell it's a primary source pretty quickly by looking at this. The person lists the methods. Okay, this person knows how this data was gathered, because this is the person who, who gathered the data. And the person is telling us, this is how we did the research. These were the methods. They're showing you all the data here. Again, this is as real as it gets. Here's the results. This is what happened. This is what we, we observed. And then the person is writing an article telling you about this data and giving you, you know, hopefully some insights on, on this data. There's a discussion here. What does this mean in the larger context? But the person writing this is the person who gathered this data and who did the study. It's a primary source. It's real. The person who gathered it or the people who, who did it, these are the people writing this article. It's They are at the source. Okay. Again, it's great as long as you understand this is not a textbook. This is not a third level source. They're not trying to summarize everything we know about this subject. They're looking at one specific, very specific, small, focused in topic that they studied. That's, that's their, that was their whole point in doing this. Okay. Also, a newspaper article written by someone on the scene. So a lot of newspaper articles are primary sources because they're written by people in that time who were at an event. Here's Hurricane slams in the Gulf, Co Gulf Coast. Dozens are dead. This is Hurricane Katrina, written from 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit, from the New York Times. And this is an account of what happened from someone who was, who was there, a reporter who was there. So that's, all, that's also a primary source. And there's, there's other examples of primary sources. A uh, primary source would be an autobiography, if you wrote the story of your life. Or something like that, you would you would be telling the story of your life from your point of view. 
someone else could question whether later, whether how accurate you were or not, or if you had a bias to only tell the good things about your life. Sometimes that's true, but you know the topic of your life pretty well. You would be the primary source. Now, one question would be, how do you search for primary sources? If you get an assignment that says, I, I want you to find primary sources for this. So I'll, I'll show you how I would do it using the, the resources we have available to you. So in the library, uh, and you probably, if you're not at CSU Global, the school I'm at, you probably have something similar to this. I would go, if you're, let's say we're looking for history, primary sources, I would go databases by subject. I'd go down to history and I'd find this database right here, US history in context. And what I would do, for example, look up Civil War. And the nice thing about this database, really great thing about it, this is a page with all sorts of resources on the Civil War. If I click right here, primary sources, it's going to bring up 138 primary sources related to the Civil War. So that, that's an easy way to do it. Another thing, primary sources for historical documents, if they're older, they're they're mostly going to be online because they're they're really no one has a copyright on them and there's a lot of different a lot of different places will will have these online for free so you could go in here and type in civil war primary source or primary sources and there are a lot of there are a lot of different sites you could go into that, that will have primary sources for the Civil War or different things. The American Civil War, a collection of free online primary sources. And there you'll find a lot of things online. Okay, let's talk about if we are looking for the other kind of primary source where we're looking for some kind of a study. Here's my trick for doing that. I'm gonna go into here to advanced search to uh, our discovery system here. I'm gonna type in Biology. Maybe I'll say, I'm just going to keep this general. Biology, subject. And then I'll say here, this is my little trick. Methods and results. And this is a little trick. So I'm going to search for articles uh, on biology. I'm going to put methods and results. If the methods and results are listed in the abstract of the article, that means in just about every case, the person who is writing this is the person who conducted the study themselves. I'm going to click the peer reviewed on there. That's going to make sure it's like a research academic type article here. And if you look through these articles, these are probably going to be, and we'll, let's make this a little more current here within the last few years. And then if you open up these articles, they will list the methods and results, and these these will be primary sources. It's kind of a little trick, kind of a little trick for finding these, these types of things. Okay, let's go back here to our presentation. Okay, let's talk about secondary sources. A second level source is how I think of this. Okay, a work written by an author analyzing or referencing primary sources and other secondary sources. So this person writing this book or this article was not a witness to the event. They're analyzing it later, looking at a lot of primary sources or, or other secondary sources, and they're analyzing it and writing a book or an article about this to help someone else understand this better. So let's look at an example. Here's an article analyzing a subject or a study not written by the person who conducted this study. So we'll bring this up here. And you see these articles all the time in popular magazines. Let's get rid of this. Not exercising may be worse for your health than smoking, study says. Okay, you see these all the time in magazines and newspapers talking about a study, and they're gonna the person writing this is gonna summarize this. Okay. It's summer it's summarized, it's written in very common language. But this person, new findings published Friday in the Journal of JAMA Network Open Detail. So this person was analyzing this study, because this study is written at the level of physicians. This this article is written at the level of the common person. And so this, which was a, uh, a primary source research study, is written with the idea that you're probably a doctor or you have a lot of medical experience reading this. This secondary source is put together to summarize it for the average reader like myself, who is not a physician. And I can probably understand this article and, and see how short it is, even though it's, 
it's analyzing a very long, very complicated document here. It's putting it into common language and common terms that the average person can understand. That's a good example of a secondary source. And it's very useful. And it probably has pretty much the same information. It's just really condensed, really condensed. And so if you wanted to get a better idea, you would go into this link here to look at the actual primary source, to look at the data, learn how the data was gathered. This person is not going to give you that level of detail. A book about an historical event written by someone who wasn't alive at the time of the event. Let's take a look at this book here. Okay, we looked earlier at the newspaper article about Hurricane Katrina, which happened in 2015. Now, this is this person was alive at the time of the event, but this person is not was not writing uh, is not writing as an eyewitness to the event. This is written in 2017, so this is years later when. Uh, this person has analyzed a lot of data, a lot of articles, and again, kind of like the other the other source we looked at, is going to really try to give you a better idea of what happened here from a from a, a distance, looking at it not just from the newspaper reporter's point of view, uh, looking at the the waves crashing up against the city. This is a person analyzing what happened and trying to give you a better idea. But this is this is a secondary source as well. And also, if you were looking at a book about the Civil War, for example, or about the Revolutionary War, trying to summarize it for you, those people would not have been there if the book was written right now, obviously. Okay. Any book or article written on a subject written by a non-eyewitness. So here we would get into the difference between an autobiography versus a biography. So here is, for example, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. So this is a story of Benjamin Franklin's life told by Benjamin Franklin. He's the author. He's telling you the story of his life. And he was there. This is as real as it gets. Uh, but, you know, maybe he leaves out some of the embarrassing parts of his life because he doesn't really want to show those parts of his life. Maybe not. Some autobiographies are very, very frank. No pun intended. Sorry about that. That just came up. Um, but... It, Still, and it's a great source as long as you understand this this person is as real as it gets and as, as much of an eyewitness to his life as it could get. But he also might have left some things out or changed some things or may have not been the most objective person. So it's not necessarily the best source. It's a great source versus this here, this biography. This is biographies of the American Revolution. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, John Paul Jones, and more. So it's written in 2013. Obviously, this was this person was not there, was not friends with Benjamin Franklin, didn't know him. But in this book, they're going to present these biographies from a historical context, looking at it from years later. And I would I would look which source is better. I would look at them both. I would look at them both and see what the differences are. What does this person say about Benjamin Franklin that Benjamin Franklin didn't say about his life? Also, writing in 2013, you have the historical context. You know, I'm not sure Benjamin Franklin knew he was going to be as historical as a person as he became. He 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 may not have understood. I'm sure he knew he was important. But this person years later can really look at the 200 years. What how what does Benjamin Franklin mean to us now? That's not that's not a perspective Benjamin Franklin could have given us at the time he was living. So again, I don't I don't think either is better than the other. They're 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 interesting and they both should be consulted. So that's. Here's a secondary source is this biography versus the autobiography, which was primary. Okay, tertiary source, a third level source. I love these sources. Everyone loves them. You may not have heard this word before, but you have certainly seen these sources. Okay, tertiary source is a summary of information found in different primary and secondary sources. So tertiary source would be a Wikipedia page on a topic. Okay, we all love these types of sources whether we admit it or not. These types of sources, this, this source here is a number of people going in, writing, and summarizing everything that we know about Hurricane Katrina. Some of it may be primary source, some of it secondary source, but this is a summary and a compilation of a bunch of different sources to try to give you just an overall understanding of this. Now, whether you think, whether you think Wikipedia is a reliable source or not, that's a different that's a different topic, but that's what it does. And that's why so many people, when you're trying to learn about a topic you know nothing about, the first thing you will do is go to Google and Google it. I do it. 
you do it, let's admit it. And one of the first sources you will often go to is Wikipedia because you just want a summary <clears throat> of everything. You don't necessarily want a primary source. You just want a quick summary and then you want to do some other research. But if you're just trying to look, learn about something quickly, a uh, tertiary source is excellent. And that's why we all use them, whether you've used that term or not. An encyclopedia article on a topic. And Wikipedia is basically an online encyclopedia uh, maintained by its users. An encyclopedia is a professionally published version of this. Let's go into this encyclopedia article. So this is an example. This is a lead leadership research starter. This is from this is an, uh, an EBSCO thing from EBSCO Discovery Service where they try to summarize all the basics of a topic. And you go down here, tells you about this. Look at all these different types of leadership types. You could go into any one of these and get get an idea of these different types of leadership. And it would be a really good place for you to start to get an idea of different leadership styles. Again, not, not a primary source. It's really a, a summary, a compilation of a lot of sources in here to try to get you up to speed quickly on a topic. And this would be a really good tertiary source, third level source. Look at all these different types of information they're compiling in here just to very quickly get you up to speed on a topic. Now, let's go back to our show here. Okay, textbook. Textbooks are great examples of tertiary sources, third level sources. A textbook is is a, a compilation of a lot of sources to give you an example of a, a good understanding of these topics quickly. It's why they're used in courses because they're so easy to use and they're they're great. So if we go in here, let's go to the ta table of contents. This is an online open OER, what they call Open Educational Resource Textbook. And just look here at the, this is an anthropology textbook. You can see it's just summarizing all these different things. And then the nice thing with textbooks is that at the end of the chapters, they oftentimes will have key terms, critical thinking, critical thinking questions, and a summary of everything you learned. It's an educational tool. It's a summary. And it's great. Third level source. I love them. I love textbooks. I think they do such a great job. Uh, so you can see all these things just just summarizing all the stuff giving you all this all this information in here very quickly very easily that's an exact excellent example of a tertiary or a third level source okay let's talk about problems related to the different types of sources and i run into these a lot as a librarian as some and as someone who helps students with their assignments and and i help people write their assignments too misunderstandings of what the terms mean Primary source does not mean an academic source or a good source. Seems like a lot of people, they say, well, I want a primary source on this. I'm looking for primary sources. And what they're really trying to say is I want a professionally published source or I want a very reliable or credible source. That's not what primary means. We, as we learned here, primary means an eyewitness, someone who was there at the time of an event or who gathered the data. It is a good source generally speaking, but it doesn't mean a good source or an academic source. It's, it's a very, very specific type of source that isn't necessarily going to meet, meet the needs of what you're looking for if you're thinking, well, I just want the best source. I need the primary source. That's, that's not what it means. I run into that a lot. Okay, this I see fairly regularly. An assignment that can only be researched using a tertiary source, summary textbook or encyclopedia level source, but students are asked to only use primary sources for their research. This is a big problem. If you run into an assignment or you've designed an assignment that is asking students, I, I want you to tell me the summary of everything we know for the last hundred years about this topic, but only use primary sources. That's not going to work. That's not going to work, especially if you're saying, I only want to see primary sources from the last three years. So you're just looking at research studies uh, from the last three years on a topic. That's not going to, the, the people writing those primary sources, those studies, are not, it's not their mission to summarize the last hundred years of research on a topic at all. That's not what they're trying to do and that's not what they will do. And so this will be a dead end assignment. Or if you run into this, unfortunately, as a student and someone has asked you to summarize everything we know about something at an encyclopedia level, but they're asking only for primary sources, it's, it's very possible they don't quite understand what a primary source is. So let's look at an example here. 
So here we go, here's our anthropology textbook, which we just looked at a second ago, uh, and or an encyclopedia. I'm going to bring this up again. Here is an encyclopedia from an EBSCO from uh, the Salem Press Encyclopedia of Science Anthropology. If you go down here, it gives you a nice summary of just real quickly everything we know about anthropology really quickly. That's great, but if you're not allowed to do that and you're being asked questions related to that, and then someone asks you to only use primary sources, or you're only looking yourself for primary sources because you think that those have to be the best, look at these primary source uh, studies. See, look at this here. You're, you're not going to be able to summarize the last hundred years of research in anthropology from these. That's not what they're doing. These studies are looking at one specific event or question, and they're gathering data on it. They're not at all trying to summarize the history of a topic. So that's, that's a problem. That's a problem that I, I see is people doing those kinds of things. Or similarly, another assignment clearly designed with secondary or tertiary sources in mind, but requiring primary source documents. I'm thinking here of, let's say, <clears throat> this is a tertiary source from the U.S. History Online Collection, just trying to summarize what we know about the Civil War. Just summarize the main ideas. You can see it's organized kind of like a textbook see all this here it kind of looks like a textbook and it's great it's going to give you a quick background and tell you all these types of things and you might need this type of source for the questions you're being asked but <clears throat> the assignment might tell you only to use primary sources or you might think you can only use primary sources and you're really looking for a summary of everything of the basics of the civil war and instead, you're just looking at these very specific primary source documents. And these are great documents, but the point of the transcript of this speech is not to, is not to tell you everything that we know about the Civil War. It's they're very specific. They're very specific and they're real people, real people in the moment. They're not, they're not teachers or writers or, or professors. They're, well, that guy's a writer, <laughs> but they're writing about very specific things. They're, they're not trying to work at the textbook level. So those are, those are problems I see with misunderstandings about these sources. Okay. Ultimately, I think the best assignments will accept a blend of primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Each source type presents a different point of view, literally. The purpose of each source is very different. A soldier in the Civil War writing a letter home to his parents is not trying to summarize the war. And an author writing a textbook about the Civil War 145 years later will not be able to have the actual first-hand knowledge of the war or the times that the soldier had. That doesn't mean any one of these is better than the other. They're both great, and they, they both should be used. So that that's hopefully gives you a little bit better understanding of what these things mean. I know there's a lot of confusion about these topics. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and hopefully this quilt cleared up some questions for you and will, will help you with this kind of confusing topic. Thanks a lot for watching.